Hello. Hello. I finally, finally, finally got to check out the December 2023 American Vogue with Nicki Minaj on the cover. I had to wait till February because Vogue's only published 10 times a year and the past couple months have been a lull in publication. So this finally became the old edition that I could take out and make a video with. Anyway, here we have Nicki Minaj as photographed by Norman Jean Roy, a Canadian photographer, and she is wearing Valentino. So this is going back a couple months, and she was promoting Pink Friday to her new project. And there's a fashion layout in here featuring Nikki, and she talks also about balancing motherhood and her art, her career, and I think that some people will be able to relate to this, the guilt that often accompanies that, which is kind of uh, interesting to think of a great big rich celebrity like Nicki Minaj and how she has maybe the same feelings that people from all socioeconomic classes might feel. But anyway, she also talks about body positivity, which is wonderful. This edition of Vogue focuses a lot on art and fashion colliding in a couple different ways, and we'll find out. Edward Hopper paintings are part of that. And a cabinet of curiosities in Rome is something to explore too. Alessandro Michel invites us into his home to share his, it, it, it's beautiful. It's just shelves and shelves of antiques and it's wonderful. And Lauren Sanchez invites us into a peek into her life with Jeff Bezos as his fiance. And there is, of course, a photo shoot involved with that, too. The earring, so the gown was uh, Valentino, and the earrings are. Irene Newworth. When I went to go on her site, I found these. I'll show them to you now. That gumball collection. Isn't it wonderful? Check it out. It's not cheap. It is not cheap. So here we have Louis Vuitton as the first ad. A flip out of what? How many? One, two, three, four, five. And six images. This is Cruise 2024. It is photographed at Lake Maggiore, which is kind of like Lake Cuomo's cousin in Italy. It's a vacation destination. We can see the lake and the mountains in the background. And the clothing has a sportswear feel to it with Baroque details is how it is described. I did find some of it. I found this pink pullover. It has an insert there, too, T-U-L-L-E. It's $3,700. We see the pink, but it's also available in Blue Glacier. And it is wool, cotton, and cashmere. 
these two ladies both have a gold foot team bag. Um, um, they're $6,700. This one is, this blue is called Lagoon, appropriately. And this one is Rosabella because it is a faint pink and it looks pretty with the yellow. I couldn't find this low cut pullover. This line is steeped in aquatic folklore, as evidenced by this little bolero jacket, which is sold out. And it is a sea creature bolero jacket. It has little sea creatures all over it. It is $8,500 if you can find it. This might have been my favorite thing of this line. Maybe not. This is a mother of pearl scale skirt. Also unavailable. It was made of 100% silk. It's $12,000. And the bag is a side trunk MM for $4,000. Canvas with a leather trim. And then we have some flounce dresses. Mermaid flounce dresses. I did find this one. I, I'm pretty sure that this is pictured in other, uh, maybe even in this magazine. It's $13,700. The bag is a Venus bag for $55.50. I didn't find this dress exactly, but this sure looks familiar. The little backpack is an excursion PM and it's $33.50. Oh no, I did find this. This is um, silk chiffon. It's $12,000 and it's, uh, it comes in, this is this color, a tang, which means pond. And it, also comes in a, I think this one sold out. It also comes in a neutral ivory. Maybe this one. It is, it's this one. I'm sorry. Or is that the same? No. This is the, this is the um, Green Mermaid. And her bag is the Atlantis GM. And it's thirty-one hundred. I could not find that dress. I always think it's interesting to read about Louis Vuitton because this is a more, this is one of the more um, historic lines because Louis Vuitton lived in the eighteen hundreds. Not, you know, in the in the uh, 1900s, like a lot of the designers have. And his mother was a hat maker. And his mother died when he was 10. And then his dad died shortly thereafter. And his stepmother raised him beyond that. And he left home when he was 15. And I just want to read more about his life. I kind of got fascinated with it when I was supposed to be looking up the clothes. <laughs> it's just a little, a little sidebar that I got involved in, but. Oh, and I found an interesting photo, a couple interesting photos I'll show you. Here is a photo when they were trunk makers in Louis Vuitton. And here is what Louis Vuitton looked like. Now we'll, we'll go bit, we'll go into Dior and we'll, Get off of my sidetrackedness and we'll get sidetracked into Dior. This was Dior's cruise collection as photographed by Brigitte Niedemeyer. And this was a collaboration with Mexico City uh, Artisans and it's Frida Kahlo inspired with the butterfly jewelry 
And look at her beautiful butterfly ring and the bracelet. This dress is everywhere when you search it. You will see a lot of people taking selfies with it, a lot of celebrities wearing it. It was very popular. I could not find it to purchase, though I know I've, I know that when this first came out, when the dress was available in one of my videos, I probably said the price, but if you got one, I think that you're lucky because you got a treasure. I sure couldn't find any. And look at the beautiful collar lilies in the middle. It's based on classic portrait as we've just, well, the classic painting. I guess you may call it a self-portrait. I don't know. The two Fridas and from 1939. Here we have Ralph Lauren. This was Holiday 2023 collection. And when I went to look it up, it's all on sale. We'll talk more about that right now. This dress is a stretch velvet evening dress. It was $3,600. When I went on the Ralph Lauren site, and it's Ralph Lauren collection, it doesn't say that on here, but there's a difference. You have to go to Ralph Lauren collection. It's on sale for $2,600. There are 2,000 crystals embedded in this stretch fabric. And the chandelier earring is available, and it's $630. This double-breasted satin blazer which isn't this the cute? I mean, look at her. Isn't she cute? This was $6.99, and it's literally half off at $3.50. Did I say it was satin? I don't remember. It is satin. I couldn't find the pants. So what beautiful holiday looks Ralph Lauren had that we're now discovering and it's the middle of February, Boop. but that's okay. Oh, is he for sale? I'll take him. So here we have a couple ready for a night out on the town. Look at these two. Could, that's just sheer perfection. So Ralph Lauren has the purple label, and that's like the really, really, really high-end stuff. But I think that I found this dress under collection. Anyway, it is not on sale, I don't think. It's beautiful. It, they're calling this gun metal. And it is a metallic pleated evening dress for 3300 So 30 no, 3770 And the jacket, I mean, look at him. How dapper. It's uh, velvet. And they're calling this the Kent jacket, like Kent, England. And it is about $1,800. The purple is so striking, isn't it? With the black pants and then her gunmetal gray dress. to make sure I was saying which person this is because I get I get all Kardashians mixed up and by extension all Jenners mixed up I should know them but I always want to make sure and it says right there Kendall Jenner and Bad Bunny and I am assuming that Kendall and Bad Bunny are at the airport they are in Los Angeles but how did those shoes stay so white, trudging through the L.A. airport and possibly L.A.? I don't know. This is photographed by Anthony Seklawi, maybe. I don't know if they're coming or going, but they are carrying classic Savoy bags. That classic 
Gucci design. Gucci of Gucci worked as a porter at the Savoy in London as a young man, and he was inspired to make luxury bags as a result. The large canvas bag that we see here with leather trim is $3,000. And the design is like so many of the high-end bigs or leather goods that we see there, equestrian inspired. That web stripe in the middle is inspired by a horse girth, the thing you put around a horse, I think, to hold on the saddle. I thought that was interesting. And they're a cute couple. Somebody tell me, I think they are. Here we have Anna Ehlers. Pretty sure she's from Ger Germany. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is Chanel Cruz. We've seen it before. And it is wonderful. I love everything about it. Who was this photographed by? I don't have it written down, but it was photographed in California on the basketball courts, in this case of Venice Beach. And in the next photo, it's on a Malibu beach, we'll see it in a minute. But look at the way this is shot, the purples. It's just wonderful. This is a laminated stretch gold top made of Jersey and it's $3,000. She has on a cashmere cardigan that is a classic Chanel look to it with a, with a playful twist, $64.50. The chain belt is $2,700, and these pants are $10,000, and they are made of wool, as the primary material, and then obviously there's sequins in it, so. I love this ad campaign. And again, the purples. It's just something to behold. And I can't take credit for this description. I don't remember where I saw it. Sorry for the little drop that I just dropped a piece of paper. In my research, somebody described this as ultraviolet dusk, and that's exactly what it is. So here we are on a Malibu beach, and she has a sparkly, sparkly, sparkly Chanel surfboard. I hope she takes it off her pretty skirt, though. That is cotton poplin, and it's $6,000. She has on another chain belt, another classic Chanel cardigan, but over a bikini top. I didn't have much luck finding any of these components. A lot of it might be sold out, or maybe you can find it. Here we have the first that we will see, but not the last of the beautiful Naya Hawk. She is in our Edward Hopper recreation of his classic paintings. She's featured as uh, Josephine in their vignettes that they have created for us. But here she is in a Prada ad. This was Prada Holiday. And this is only one, I think. Prada's holiday ad he had these life, well, they're larger than life, really, aren't they? These baubles, like they've cracked open a Christmas ornament almost. And in this case, Maya is in it. And there are other uh, models and actors and actresses in some of the other ads. And the check pattern here is very reminiscent of the Prada Christmas ornaments. And I'll show you a picture of one. I 
I found a pale, pale pink woolen cashmere coat for a few thousand dollars by Prada. I couldn't be certain that it was this exact coat. And when you go on Prada and click on holiday 2023, it directs you to something else. But she's got on some a very beautiful pink, pale, pale pink sequiny dress with a matching coat over it. Here we have two pages of Rolex ads because it's the holiday season. Well, it was approaching into the holiday season or end of year. Maybe you don't celebrate a holiday, but the jewelry ads were coming out strong. So we have four pages of Rolex ads. What makes a Rolex a Rolex? Hashtag perpetual. The gist of it is what makes a Rolex a Rolex? It's the time it takes to make one with the workmanship. Superlative certified. That's the green seal. Since 2015, the seal of watchmaking excellence. You have to make sure if you're buying a Rolex that it has that. I know you can buy a lot of different things that maybe say they're a Rolex, but you have to be careful, huh? I don't want you to get tricked. I don't want you to waste your money. Here we have the black tie campaign. It was a lovely campaign. Photographed by Stephen Meisel. This was at Oheka Castle in Huntington, New York on Long Island. We have Kaya Gerber. If you live near there, I'll show you a picture. Here's a photo of that historic hotel. They are having a bride and groom show. If you live in New York or maybe you live in uh, Connecticut or on the East Coast where you can get to New York quickly on a by car or train, they're, they're, this, this historic hotel is having a show. Maybe you can go and get some ideas for your wedding. But anyway, this this is a skirt, and it's, it's so pretty. It's red. We can't tell from the picture. It's $7,000. It's out of stock. And the bag is rock stud. We can't see her feet, but the shoes and the bags and these ads, these black tie campaign ads, were all rock stud, I think. And she's got on a tie. I couldn't find any of this because I know it probably all sold out. See the rock stud boots in the bag? The bag and the boots are probably not sold out, but this dress was a popular dress. And it was, I think, $11,500 crepe couture again. The last fashion magazine I did, Zendaya had this dress on. It's just one of those dresses that, I mean, it's beautiful. Look at it. And everybody wanted it, and they sold out. Here's Cartier. Panther de Cartier. This has two panther heads on it. And this is the Fabulous Cartier House Campaign, and it is fabulous, isn't it? This, if you go on Cartier and you look at bracelets, you're going to see all kinds of variations of this and all kinds of price points, and a lot of them only have one panther head. And maybe they're just all gold, and they're a few thousand dollars. This one, though, is special. 
It's got two panther heads. It's yellow gold with black lacquer and um, sabrite garnets with a T. And this one is $45,900. But this bracelet has all kinds of variations. It's, it's one of the higher end bracelets. Here we have Emma Corn from The Crown from Miu Miu. And we have seen her in a lot of ads with this. I read uh, one article that described this line as a librarian chic, but without pants. I mean, they have pants on, but they're shorts, and you can usually see their undies. And it's cute. I love it. I, I wouldn't be able to pull it off, but I, I'm, I'm there for it. I think she looks adorable. They are celebrating their 30th anniversary this year. Here it is. This little bag. I'm pretty sure I found that one for $2,250. The wool cardigan is $25.50. Bag is patent leather. And she has on she has some headphones and sunglasses. And she's in a pensive moment there. And the cute, cute, cute velvet slippers are 1100 But this is a feast for the eyes. Burberry. Burberry. This was their holiday campaign. And if you go on their site, or if you look up that campaign, it's really something special. It's cute because there are a lot of dogs and um, ducklings, and there might be even other animals. I don't know. But they have their, I, their um, emblem there. Two different places. And this purple, after I looked up the bags, I looked at this purple, which is striking, and I realized that this bag, the solid bag, when it comes in a purple that they're calling thistle, but it's very similar to this purple. I mean, if you were to describe it. So the bags that are in this beautiful bouquet here, roses, because it's, it's an English company, yellow and pink and white and red. These are mini shield sling bags, and they're a couple thousand dollars. The plain one here comes in a vine, which is green, that thistle, which is purple, Black Knight K N I G H T, which is a like a navy blue. They also have something called a haze, which is like a lilac, a very light purple, and pearl. And they have mimosa, which is a bright yellow. And this one's called ripple. This is called Ripple slash Hunter, the Ripple Red and the Hunter Green. And they also have this plaid bag in a yellow plaid with a light grayish green that they have a lot of apparel that coordinates with. It's very lovely. Here we have Jenny from Blackpink. And... She is wearing Coco Crush Some Encounters You Wear Forever. She's wearing a lot of different jewelry, but this Coco Crush is what they are promoting. And this is the quilted emblem that is iconic to the brand. 
since 1955. And these are about as pictured. There's no diamonds. They're just gold. 18 karat white or 18 karat, they call it beige gold, not yellow. They're about $3,000 and I think they would make a wonderful wedding band. My husband and I just have plain gold bands. It did the trick, you know. We, we don't often wear them, but it's a classic look. And speaking of classic looks, who do we have here? We have Kim Kardashian for Marc Jacobs. And this is Resort 2023 line. Her hair kind of matches your outfit, which I did not find. Tyrone LeBun is responsible for the photography. It's wonderful. And the bag, I'm pretty sure I found this sequined bag. It's canvas, like a lot of his bags are. And it was $350. They are having a sale, Mark Jacobs says. A lot of this stuff is on sale. But I couldn't find the sequined tank top, nor the skirt. Of the jewelry it says too or not. I don't know. Here's our table of contents with Miss Ms. Lauren Sanchez, fiance of Jeff Bezos. And she is in a Wrangler jumpsuit. Now she was a pilot before she met him, I think. We're gonna know more once we get to the story. I kind of grazed through it. Photographed by Annie Leibowitz. I don't know when they're going to be married. If we get a look onto their Texas ranch, I'll admit I don't know much about Jeff Bezos. And I had to look up a couple times, well, who was Lauren Sanchez again? But now I know. But they both divorced former spouses and are starting anew and getting married. This is another dress. If you look it up, it was uh, a very popular dress. It's out of stock. It's silk. Well, it's mostly silk. This was the friend of Fendi campaign. This was $4,600. And it's a beautiful photo, isn't it? There were a lot of selfies and celebrities in that beautiful silk pink dress. It was very popular. This black wool dress is classic, isn't it? This was $2,900. This was in stock. And that wool coat, that's an animal print for $5,200 in black. son and I took a walk yesterday. We're having some pretty nice weather here in Michigan. I think it's going to get cold again. But he's reading a book that is about a preacher or a pastor and it's set in the Great Depression. And he was talking about the Bible passage, you know, do not covet anything. And I'm going to try not to covet this coat, but I do covet it. <laughs> I just thought of him when I was looking through this and our discussion about you know, coveting anything. This is wonderful. This is Max Mara and it's the cube. And the cube design stems from 2008 and it's very innovative. It's so innovative that it is in display cases and not only the Berlin State Museum, but also the New York City Fit Fashion Institute of Technology. These cube products come in all different things, uh, vests, bomber jackets, parkas. But I'm pretty sure I found the, oh, and I think that this is a technical, well, a water resistant, coat and a technical fabric, but some of them are satin. There are all different varieties in this 
the, the cube design. And I can't be for certain that I found the exact coat because there were so many of them. But I, I think I found it for $1,200, but I expected it to be more, to be honest with you. But doesn't it just look like a big blanket that you can wear? The other thing that I don't want to covet too much is a teddy bear coat. And they, Max Mara is famous for that. And it seems like once I started to be aware of teddy bear coats and my wanting of one, I began to see people wearing them in my community. I noticed it more, so, but that's all right. I have a very warm ski coat that I wear. That came from, um, well, it was secondhand, but it's a, it's a good ski coat that has uh, been worth the little bit of money that I made. I did pay for it. These are David Uriman sculpted cable, and we have seen them before, and aren't they beautiful? Now, the price points on these, well, I can tell you a couple things. Depends on the width. I think we have two widths here. I can't be certain what they are just by looking at the picture, but I know that they have a 4.6 millimeter width, and that with diamonds is 7,500. And without diamonds, it's about 4,000. The 6.2 millimeter width, which I'm assuming is this little thicker one, with diamonds The 6.2 millimeter, I didn't write it down. I had to stop and look it up. With diamonds, I'm assuming it's that one, is about 9,500. And without, it's about 5,500. But I, these almost look better on the website than they do on the in this photo, I have to say. What a classic, beautiful bangle bracelet. It's a lot of money, I know, and I'm poor. I wouldn't be able to afford probably even like the Target version of this. So, this would be something, though, that would be, I would think it would be beautiful in a 100 years. Don't you? I didn't know anything about this gentleman, but... This is a fascinating story to me. This is Alessandro Michel. He is, I think, 52 years old. No, I'm sorry, he's 51. I don't know when his birthday is. He's the former creative director of Gucci, and he is, everybody's watching him to see what he'll do next. But we get to go into his home that he shares with his partner, and it is filled with beautiful, he's a beautiful thing. But his home is filled with beautiful things, too. It's in his apartment in Rome. It's wonderful. And it was a nice little escape from the reality this morning of my husband texting me about where our Blue Cross cards are that he already lost once. And we had to get sent a new set. And then I was convinced that I lost the second set. So I appreciate this magazine for helping me escape my reality of I found them. I didn't know what I did with them, but I found them. I had to laugh, though. I want to escape into this wonderful apartment. But you know what? Maybe they lost their Blue Cross cards, too, or whatever they have in Italy. I just thought it was my little departure, and it's it's lovely. I hope you enjoy reading it with me. Here's Charlize Theron for, Jador, for Dior Jador. And it's not flicked out because this is from the library with a pretty bottle. Looked up, 
I mean, I can kind of smell what it smells like, but I looked up the base of this perfume. What is its essence? And it's orchids, violets, rose, and blackberries. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Here we have vogue.com backslash shopping. And this dress I had looked up before. It's very distinctive looking, so it's pretty easy to look up. It's by Richard Quinn, and it is on sale. It is a crepe caped midi dress. It's on sale for $750. I did not find the other outfits. They might get, um, sometimes it's hard to just search a white jacket or white pants, but this is very distinctive, and it came up right away. Here we have Dakota Fanning as photographed by Jorgen Teller. Look at her. When she was just a kid, she's all grown up now. For Lueve. And this is a pebble bucket bag. If this is the mini version, it's about $2,500. And the color is definitely vivid orange. It is made of calf skin. If you go on Lueve's site, I mean, the orange is beautiful but they have a yellow one that is sunflower. It's called sunflower, it's beautiful. And of course it comes in black, a beautiful brown that they're calling oak, a dark burgundy, and I think another color that I am not remembering now, but look at, the, uh, it looks, is it on, um, where is this on? A diving board? Into a going into a pool that nobody's cleaned? I don't know, but the colors are a beautiful contrast. So let's concentrate on what she's wearing because I like this beautiful cropped cardigan and it is $3,300 and they're calling it khaki green. It's mohair and wool, but this is the kind of thing that if I wore anything similar to this, and I was around my dog, my dog or my son's dog. They would see me as a threat, possibly. I just can't do it. The high waist, waisted jeans. Mm. I, I think that these aren't available. The jeans on Loewe's site, they're all about a thousand dollars. They're a luxury denim. And then she has a squeeze bag, Napa lambskin, $5,200. I'm pretty sure that's that size. This is an enormous, I think, six-page ad, maybe more, from Montclair Grenoble. I hope I'm saying that right. Which, um, is considered the, well, like the capital of the French Alps, I guess. We have some prominent snow sport champions here. Richard Perman, which I don't know which ones they are. Sean White, Perrine Lafont, and Ziu Tong Kai. The goggles, at least these goggles, and I think anything like them, if you're a skier, the goggles run about 400 some dollars on the Montclair site. These are sold out, but this is, we'll see more of this jacket pretty soon, and here they are coming down a mountain. I'll admit, when I first looked at this, I thought maybe they were walking up the mountain because I just wasn't thinking it was early in the morning. They've made a lightweight layering system for people that participate in winter sports or maybe you're just outside a lot in the winter. But maybe what this is more in celebration of with the large ad is the fact that this is an Italian brand, but they have opened their first flagship store in St. Moritz, 
I guess it's right in the middle. But we see there are four athletes participating in maybe activities after they have gone out on the slopes and of course on the slopes skiing and snowboarding, drying out their clothing, playing cards, playing games, relaxing, reading, just looking cool. There are is a lot of Gore-Tex involved in the creation of this outerwear. See how oh, it's six pages. It's quite something. It's wonderful photos. And here we have, I, I'm sure I'm not saying this person's name right, Siutang Kakai. But this jacket, I did find, and it's $2,200. So that'll give you a, um, if you're not already familiar, a basis on what this all costs. It's, I don't know if it's the highest end ski brand. I don't know. This is our letter from the editor, Anna Wintour. This is Annie Leibowitz in a coffee shop in 1973. And Anna goes on to talk about her appreciation for their relationship throughout the years and what a hard, dedicated worker she is, Annie. And I love love, love the Edward Hopper um, piece that's coming. I hope you do too. It's coming. Here we have Kylie Jenner for her eyewear, Dolce & Gabbana eyewear collection, which it's available at different eyewear vendors, but I have found a quite extensive collection of it at Lens Crafters, and it runs about $300 to $400. Look at that blue. Beautiful, beautiful sapphire blue, and it's De Beers. This is Enchanted Lotus. The lotus being the symbol of purity and perfection all in one. If you go on the De Beer site and you click on Enchanted Lotus, things with this design will come up, but they will be a few thousand dollars and they're very beautiful, but they are not what our model is wearing. To see what she's wearing, you have to go on the high jewelry section and then click on their Enchanted Lotus collection to show this is drop earrings and then the fancier pendant. And they are not a few thousand dollars. They're tens of thousands of dollars. The earrings, either the, no, I'm pretty sure the earrings were 80,000. That's just what we're, if you want to see what she's wearing, it's in the high jewelry. So this is Banana Republic. I loved this, but I couldn't find it. Banana Republic has tons of, tons and tons of clothing. And I couldn't even tell what color this is because it's a black and white photo. But she looks lovely in that knit high neck. Or is it a high neck? Yeah. Tank top sweater. But I did find a oh, coat. It's an oversized wool coat, and it's Banana Republic, so they are having a sale like they usually are. The coat was $500. It's now $375. It's a camel color, and the sequined pant is $250. And they just threw him in because he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even really tell what he's wearing. A black shirt and black pants, I'm assuming, from Banana Republic. Here are some of our artistic contributors for our when art meets fashion piece that's coming. And it's wonderful. And here are three of the artists that will be featured. Now Kim Elizabeth Columba 
and Paul Chan from various places in the world. And they were each asked to respond through art. And we will see their art pieces. We see a little preview of some of them, but we'll see them up close when we get to the article. They were asked to respond. They were each given a separate designer through an art piece to that designer. It's wonderful. Here we have Marion Cole Tower for Chanel. Miss Goldminner, yes, for her role as Edith Piaf and La Vie en Rose. You went through with Vogue, the podcast. If you listen to podcasts and you like fashion, check it out. Here's a little preview of our Edward Hopper a spread that was coming. And here is a little behind the scenes. I think that this is the, um, I think that this dress that Maya Hawk has on, I'm going to get off on a tangent here. That's Louis Vuitton. Is it possible that it's one of these mermaid dresses? Let's see. I think it is. But that's just getting off on a tangent. Here's another tangent that you can get off on. Look at this. Swarovski celebrate wonder. This was their holiday campaign. And in this case, it's emerald colored stones. This is the Mesmero ring. And it's open there. So look it up if you want to. I mean, this, this half is two clear crystals. And then that one is a an emerald color, Mesmera, it's called. It should be pretty easy to look up, $119. And this is the Hyperbola, I don't know if I'm saying it right, cocktail ring for $250. So that's all emerald stone themed jewelry. And they have all different colors. And they've got a beautiful website. Here's Movado. This is a museum classic. One of many. They have all different uh, face colors, bands. One like this with a metal band is about $1,300. And one with a leather band, same thing, is about $700. High Noon, High Design, Swiss made since 1881, another very old, well, relatively old company. Look at those beautiful teeth. Matteo Bocelli, for guess, do you know who he is? He is a singer, and he is the 26-year-old son of Andrea Bocelli. This is their holiday campaign. And it's vintage glam in Italy. And this is only, I think it's only two pages. But there's all kinds of images that you can see from this shoot. And they're all wonderful. He's very handsome. And he's young and he's going places, I would say, wouldn't you? This dress, well, now that I'm looking at it, I surely did not find this dress. Because on guess... If you ever need a really sexy little black dress, go to for not not much money, well, relatively speaking, go to guess because I kind of got lost looking for this little dress. I put in, wouldn't you say this is a halter dress? I'm seeing now that it's got a lot of detail, like a mesh detail to it. I did find a halter dress. It was Yasmin, but it didn't have that little cutout there, a little peekaboo, let's call it. It was just a plain black dress, and it was on sale for $58. Couldn't find that exact dress, though, because you will just get lost in black dresses on the guest site. Goodbye, Vogue House. This is written by Grace Coddington, 
And here is not a worker taking down the words Vogue House. He was putting them up about in 1958 on the facade, maybe. And here we have a shot from 1965. Photographer David Bailey shot by Terry O'Neill. And here are some models with the plush interior. This is British Vogue's Edward Enenful and his Boston Terrier Roo, and he's flanked by models. The Vogue house is moving to, I don't, I, in South London, I think it said, but they have Grace Coddington write a story and then a couple other people, and we'll see as we flip through. Dear memories of this cherished place where British folk was is based out of in Mayfair. They're saying goodbye to their headquarters. Grace Coddington has some stories about Beatrix Miller, who um, started as a stenographer and was editor of British Vogue for a couple decades, I hope I'm saying it right. She wasn't a stenographer for Vogue. She worked somewhere else in the building and worked her way up to that. Get this issue of Vogue. It, um, if I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I've just grazed it like I usually do. But they're, they're wonderful stories. Here we have a Van Cleef and our pals ad. This is... The Perlay line, we've seen it before, at least I have. This is the Clover's bracelet. It is $29,700. And the ring is three, three rows of diamonds. It's about $11,000. And the Perlay line features these golden beads. You can go on their site. It details the craftsmanship ship that goes into creating the jewelry using these golden beads. It's quite something. It's always fun to look at Van Cleef and our pals. My other little anecdotal story, I'll go ahead and tell it. I was at a holiday party and I sat with, we were seated with random people. It was for um, my the company my son works for. And the young lady that I sat next to, I mean, she was young. She wasn't a child, but she was much younger than me. She was in her 20s. And she had on a Van Cleef and our pals uh, Alhambra bracelet. And I couldn't keep my, hand, my eyes off of it, not my hands. I made a Freudian slip. But I wonder if it was real or if it was fake. It was very pretty, though. Her Grace Coddington's, and one of her quotes from our story here was, it wasn't exactly a professional environment, but somehow we gained a reputation of being rather good, even though we had tiny budgets. And here's a staff lunch in 1980. It makes me think of Absolutely Fabulous, which I love. And I've seen every episode one million times, probably. But I wonder if that's what, it, at all, what the environment emulates. Here we have Mariah Carey. She's really made her uh, self known for Christmas time things, and here she is. It celebrates Mariah's season. This is a slip that I couldn't find because if you go on Victoria's Secret and look at slips, you'll get lost in it. They didn't really have a holiday section anymore, it was all about Valentine's Day. Pretty a lot of the sites that I went on, obviously, it being the time of year that it is. They were promoting things for Valentine's Day. But if you found that, I would say it would be between $100 and $200. You might even be able to find it on sale. It's very pretty. 
beautiful uh, Q&A with Mariah Carey for Christmas and holiday season. Maybe not so much Christmas. So here's Plum Sykes take on the British Vogue House saying goodbye to it and some photographs through their time there. Stella McCartney up here, Robin Muir, and Victoria Fado. We're in Stella McCartney. And they all talk about working their way through their careers, in a lot of cases working their way up the ladder. Plum started tidying the fashion closet, photocopying, filing, and making endless cups of tea for the editors, getting gaining work experience out of Oxford, and then working their way up. Amalfi Lucky Dice, this is for men. Is that what the bottle looks like, I wonder? And this is uh, for women, Royal Black Diamond. And more on Psychia for women. It would be worth buying it just for the bottles, wouldn't it? There's no samples. At least I don't think. It's just very thick paper compared to the, the pages, the actual magazine pages. This is for men. Intrigeant. Beth Ann Hardison, I want to see this. This is a documentary. She made it. Invisible Beauty, you can stream it now. It's um, on just under two hours. But it documents her career. Through the fashion industry, she changed the way fashion looks. I will watch it and report back. I might, I might get my husband to watch it. She was a model, an agent. She is a model, an agent, and an activist. It sounds very intriguing. It gets wonderful reviews on the internet. So let's check it out. So this is Sarah Paulson. She is in Brandon Jacob Jenkins' play Appropriate on Broadway until March 4th. And I want to go see it. And if anybody wants to meet me in New York City to go see it, I will get hop on the bus. <laughs> I'll have to work remotely the whole time, but I would love to go see this play. I mean love. If that would all I would get for 2024 was to go see this play, I would do it. Here she is in Proenza Schuler. The cuff is Tiffany and Company, but this play lured her back to Broadway. She's been in so many things on TV. But this play wooed her back. She does have a lot of stage experience. But what is the play appropriate? Listen to the plot. Members of a family, now that the patriarch dies, the dad dies, and all the siblings come back to a crumbling Arkansas plantation home to settle his affairs. And a deep, dark secret gets unleashed. I'm not going to read what it is, even though I desperately want to. I, I want the, to go see this play. It just intrigued me. Here we have, I'll never be able to say that. This is a champagne ad. Made in hand with nature. I'm sure that's Louis instead of Louis, like my American mouth wants to say it. It's a cool ad. A tree with roots. And Fanning. I, I knew it was a Fanning, but she plays one of the sisters. Here she is from a Vogue June 2017 
shoot by Annie Leibovitz. Ruby Hughes, Julie Roberts, Chopard. And this is Lure de Diamant, the Diamond Hour. Is that what that means? The jewelry that she wears in the ads, you're going to have a hard time, at least I do, going on the Chopard site and finding it. It's definitely high jewelry. It's not just the regular jewelry that you click on, watches or whatever. And this watch, I'll show you a picture of the watch that I think it is. This is a black and white photo. I'm pretty sure it's that watch because it is, they have interchangeable bands. This watch is almost $100,000. And then the earrings, I know I've looked up. I can't find them on the site. They're, they're again, tens of thousands. Sarah Paulson's quote about the play is, that moment that the curtain goes up and the lights, or the lights dim, it's the closest thing to church to me. My son was just in a, 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 a local production of Cabaret, but it just fueled my love of live theater, the emotion. In one particular performance, of my son's anyway, we went twice. It sold out the whole time, thank goodness. But there was, um, there were older people sitting in front of my husband and I for one of the performances. They were in the front row because that was the accessible row for um, handicapped people, and they were at least 80. And it was two, I assume, sisters, and then maybe their rem a remaining husband, a male companion. And the sisters sat um, touching each other, huddled together the whole time. And there was a po point in the play, and they remarked on my son's uh, performance to each other. And you could feel the emotion in their voice. And it just, when you experience something like that in a theater, you can't, there's something about that. I know that people experience that with sports. And we're going through Super Bowl fever right now. But nothing um, can recreate that human experience, I think. I got off on a tangent. Remember how I said... I wanted to go to the play as the most thing that I wanted in 2024. I lied. I want to go to Transylvania, and I want to go to the spa. This is the Matka, M-A-T-C-A, spa. And that word has something to do with uh, bees, honeybees, which they do here. This is in the Carpath how do you say it? Carpathian Mountains like where Dracula lived, in Romania, and they've created this spa. And I think I have found a picture of it. I'll show it to you. One of the things that they offer there is hay bathing. They immerse you, I'm assuming nude, <laughs> in bundles of warm hay. I mean... I want to go. I Again, I have no money. I mean, I have a little bit of money, but it seems like I have to spend all my money on replacing ancient gas lines and keeping my ancient things in my ancient house going. And I'm pretty sick of it. I want to go to Transylvania and go to a spa. Brunello Cuccinelli has a fragrance for men or for women or for whoever you are. Buy them both. Mix them together. The bottles are pretty cool. What do they smell like? Each one is described as citrusy and spicy and they range in price for, from $150 to 
to $210. Here's an ad for the New Yorker 2024 Desk Diary, and it seems cool, but it, it would be, um, I think I would get anxious having one, like, I don't have anything interesting to write in here. Do I? I bet you that I could, though. It just seems kind of, um, I would never use it. I mean, I want one, and I would look at it every day, but... You can choose from seven colors, and I didn't look it up. I don't know how much they are. So this is the beauty This that won the uh, Vogue Open Casting. Oh, I don't know that she won it. I'm lying. She's a finalist. And this is all at Pandora, Stacks of Charm. Oh, isn't it lovely? Look at her beautiful skin. This is an ad. So she's a finalist. I remember reading about, I think there were six or seven finalists, and I'm lying that she won. I mean, she may win, but she's winning all Pandora jewelry produced by Vogue and Pandora. So if you like any of that, go hop on Pandora right now. And here's an ad for Dooney and Burke from Norwalk, Connecticut. Since 1975, they've set the standard in leather craftsmanship. And now they have their iconic book on their bag. I think that I've looked this bag up. Nothing on there is, I don't think it's thousands of dollars. It's hundreds of dollars. And I think that that bag is about $350. Look at this humongous, humongous, humongous. Cute, 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 colorful ad for the Holiday 100. The 100 gifts on Google. And I went on that today, and it, it was nothing. It's no more. The top 100 gifts. You could even tear that out. I'm not gonna. This isn't my magazine. And it would make cute wrapping paper. Was that the point? Or is that just my little recycling mind kicking in? Here we have internet sensation Emma Chamberlain. She was at least one of the faces of this ad campaign. I tried to look up her cute outfit and I couldn't find it. And she's on some carpeted stairs that looks like she's just in somebody's house with their wallpapered walls. These lamps are adorable. And they are, I did find them. They are mid-century, portable, cordless, rechargeable little LED lamps for $22. And I want one. They're very cute. This was a new one on me. I've never seen an ad for them and I, the only fashion knowledge I have is through these magazines. This is L.A.-based Fear of God, uh, as run by Jerry Lorenzo. They have a lower-end line. It's called Essentials. That is not so expensive. But this is not from the lower-end line. This is from the luxury end of their uh, loungewear. They are debuting their loungewear. This is a cashmere robe. I think it might have, uh, well, no, I think it's only cashmere, $1,800. But like the undies, the high-end undies that are, they do have poplin in them, are two pairs for $150. So that's a luxury item. But, you know, if you're on a budget, maybe you go on the um, Essentials site and look up that portion to see if something's in your price point if you want to try that out. This is a wonderful holiday ad campaign for Esprit. 
they are trying to get back out there. And I think they're doing a good job because how, how much more holiday can you get than all of these beautiful faces lining up with mail in their hands, sending mail in a great big red mailbox in candy cane colors, beautiful denim. I mean, it's cute. It's reasonably priced, naughty or nice in stores or on Esprit.com. It's very um, festive looking. We'll see how their comeback works. Here is one of our art meets fashion pieces. A little quip in here is about how much the artist Georgia O'Keeffe loved fashion. I didn't know that she owned more than 100 um, dresses. She loved shoes. This is written by Marley Marius, and they investigate the rich history of artists working with clothes in their lives and in their work. I don't know how to say this person's name. R Rute, R-U-T-E, Merck. Born in 1991 in Lithuania. Berlin-based artist. Look this person up. Um, this is from 2019, and it's one of many of the this Balenciaga's looks that they have painted. It's, it's wonderful. I just got lost in looking at the artwork. This is a Thailand-based artist. This is Girlfriends, 2022, Jia Prach, Prachakul. And we'll see Alice Neal uh, going back in time a little bit because Alice Neal was born in 1900. But we can see how fashion plays into, a, in this case, modern artwork. We'll flip the page in a minute, but let's not skip over Lily James here for Versace. And this is a very reasonably priced um, perfume. And it's a really a great example of a very high-end brand producing a wonderfully reasonably priced fragrance for the masses, so to speak. And it is a floral fragrance, but with uh, pops of pomegranate, it's described. I want to flip it open and smell it, but I won't. You can smell it from here and it smells great. It's available at all your finer department stores. This is a little reminder to myself. This is Architectural Digest. My son bought me, he was at a, I don't know, I don't know where he was, but he was at a vintage store. And what he bought was not so vintage, but he bought me two beautiful copies of Architectural Digest from 2023. And I want to read them on videos when I have the time. Takori. Never knew much about this company. I do now. Here we see a lovely couple. Looks like they're going to get married. Takari, Takori, I'm sorry, is um, been around for about 40 years. They are a three-generation family-owned company, and all of this jewelry is handcrafted by artisans in California. I meant to look up where in California, and I didn't, but the father was from Romania, and then I think he immigrated here and met the mom in L.A. But this pear-shaped tennis bracelet, which pretty something. I mean, to see a tennis bracelet with a pear-shaped diamond, it's about $11,000. Check out their site if you want to look more at their jewelry. It was very beautiful. Here is an Alice Neal. This is uh, Wellesley Girls with their little mini skirts on, circa 1967. 
clothing, once the marker of a sitter's social status, has more and more to say lately, it says. Here's a phenomenon that's new to me. And when I first saw this cat food ad, boop, I thought, well, this is different. You know, I read all kinds of magazines. I read old magazines, women's magazines, fashion magazines. But in Vogue, never see, I've never seen a cat food ad, have I? Somebody remind me. But he sure is cute, and I love him. We have an ad for Purina One, and it doesn't end there. What's going on here? I know I will roll with it. I'm all for it. There's more. There's more pet food ads coming though. What does it all mean? Probably nothing. True Tone. Here we have Kendall Jenner. This is from March 2022. This shoot. She's wearing a Fendi coat. But maybe these little guys painting on her are trying to decide what Kendall's color is. I'd say she can wear anything. This, Lynn Yeager wrote this. And she writes about finding her color and how people, you can hire people to study you. And... Jeannie Stiff, the founder and CEO of Color Guru, is featured in here, but there are people you can hire to help you find your season, let's say. And Lynn here laments that she wants to be a moonlit winter, but yet she's been classified as a vivid winter. And she speaks of the funereal undertones of vivid winter. I wonder how much it costs to get that done. I don't know. We all know that there are certain hues that we may love. It may be in makeup or, in my case, nail polish or clothing. Even paint color on your wall, though, when you think about it. But it's ju it just doesn't mix with your skin tone. The nuances. Look at these colors. These are on sale these Skechers Unos with the rainbow lips. It's a cool ad. They're on sale at Skechers. I think they were 80 something dollars when I clicked on them today, searching for them. They're, I found them today anyway for $63.75, I think. Sec Lab is the other company that will um, help you find out your shade. The clients range, range from young professionals to prospective brides, and they need to answer the burning question, am I a pure or creamy white? This all started in the 1980s with a book called Color Me Beautiful, Possibly. Everybody's dying to know what, what season they are. Here we have their little ad that they always have in Vogue. That's always my favorite product. I mean, I highly doubt that that model uses that, but she might. She might. I'm not knocking it. The new shape uh, LED lipo wrap. I don't know. The beach waver. Erase wrinkles while you sleep. South Beach. Peptide PM Shield, I do want that. I'd be willing to try that out. The Facial Hair Magic Fix, new from Japan. Oh, what's in it? Get rid of facial hair permit. I would be scared to put that on. The Blender, we see a lot. The Foot Cushion for your heels. Olive Skin Care, Extreme Tone by Body Lotion by Macari, Fragrance with Benefits, Eau de Parfum, Anti-Stress, mm. Sandalwood Incense and Orange Flower, does it work? I don't know. And the SBLA Beauty Wand. 
the Zio Min ad, the huge ad with the laundry list of disclaimers, discover the smart toxin for your frown lines, or maybe don't. Put a bow on it. This is by Alice Rob, and it is about the comeback of hair ribbons. She details a couple anecdotal stories about her attempts at pulling this new look off and how maybe it didn't work. But this is as photographed in March of 2023. This beautiful hair ribbon, this model can sure pull it off. She talks about the last time ever really considering this, putting a bow in her hair, being a ballerina as a little girl. And that's probably what a lot of us can think back to. But it's coming back in a big way, the hair bow. And the designers are all jumping on board. Here's a fancy feast ad. That's what my cat Yoko eats. That's what she thinks that she looks like, but it's not. I'm so familiar with this way this white cat looks because I have fancy food boxes all over my, my office because I stock up. So that's our second pet food commercial or ad. I'm pretty sure there's another one coming. Look at these two with their pretty bows. They're evoking their inner ballerina, it says. Prior to the 18th century, ribbons were pi primarily a part of menswear, it says. Hmm. And they talk about a $128 Jennifer Bear, B-E-H-R, like the paint, velvet bow barrette that you can buy in, in part of the revived appeal. This is about uh, the online design retailer, a Basque, which I popped on very quickly, and they do have some beautiful, lovely things. This is a inlay jewelry box and a beautiful goblet. I didn't see anything incredibly expensive, like $30,000, but nothing was cheap. It was hundreds of dollars. Made by artists. And check it out if you want to look at all lovely things all day. Goldman Sachs Private Wealth Ma Management. If you need somebody to um, help you manage your wealth. So this is a chic celebration of American designers and their beginnings. They gathered three pioneering designers and engaged a conversation that recognized the importance of community and mentorship in one's career. And here they are. But it's an ad for Goldman Sachs. Here are some books. This was around the holiday time again, so these might have been some nice coffee table books to buy. One with Queen Elizabeth, one with Linda Evangelista, as photographed by Stephen Meisel. And this one is the, we, there was a, an article about this in a magazine that I've done a video on. It was the Oscar night sessions from Vanity Fair magazine. This one happens to be Serena Williams, but that is by uh, Mark Seliger, Seliger. I don't know. They have a bunch of coffee table books that mainly have a fashion bend to them. Ralph Lauren, A Way of Living. Things that would be nice as gifts. Here's an ad for Fountain Blue in Las Vegas Resort and Casino. And here's Balenciaga. This is actually, when I went on Balenciaga to look this stuff up, 
I thought it might be holiday. I might not be able to find a lot of it. And it definitely has a holiday look. But these items, I didn't find this stuff. It's actually spring 2024 it, on their site, which was surprising. But I'm just telling you if you want to look. This is very pretty. It's viscose knit. It's $3,950. Here we have Michelle Yolk. Everything, everywhere, all at once. And it's rib knit cashmere for $25.50. This is a clip out. But that lady is in where you click for spring 2024, surprisingly, to find that stuff. Raising her game, Nicki Minaj. We got to our Nicki Minaj portion. Our magazine. So this is Marc Jacobs blazer and pants, Tory Burch earrings. The fashion editor on this was Max Ortega. Again, photographed by Norman. I'm going to assume Jean. He is from Canada. Really. On the eve of releasing her new album, Nikki is in a is she's in a contemplative mood. Thinking about marriage, motherhood, alter egos, creativity, and confidence. Here comes my cat. She opened the door. This is Nicki Minaj. That is her yearbook picture, age 17. LaGuardia High School, like the airport. Here she says, I had adult burdens way too early in a Ferragamo sweater in briefs that we've seen before somewhere. I've seen this whole thing before. Uh -oh. But she looks beautiful in it. If you give this magazine another thing to, another wonderful piece to read about. About her childhood and her rise to fame and who she is. So let's look at this yellow backdrop to photo. The trench coat is Bottega Veneta. And as is the shirt, what an interesting combination, a contrast. And then the hat, oh, look at that hat, it's wonderful. Albertus Swanpole. Her quote here, this is interesting. I think of Nicki Minaj, in quotation marks, of more like the Superman suit, who you change into when you go into the telephone booth. Her persona, let's say. And here's her boy. She publicly calls the little boy Papa Bear. I'm sure that some people might know his real name, but I don't. What's the coat? Vet moms, jacket, hoodie, and pants. And look at this yellow dress, isn't that beautiful? With again a yellow background. Dolce and Gabbana Alta Moda dress. Oh, it's quite something. It's so lacy. I would always tell people, watch, when I have a child, I'm going to cook every meal for him and bake cookies every day. Maybe some subconsciously, I hoped my focus would be just on being a mother, and I looked forward to that idea. It felt like a relief. But what happens is that you find out you have to work. It's 
the truth. I've had a lot of time to figure myself out. The idea of accepting what you can't change. It just never clicked with me before, but now I understand. She, she famously got fired from three separate Red Lobsters after discourteous treatment from the customers while they kept hiring her back, right? What is this dress? It is Alexander McQueen. Gown, earring, and cuff. That is quite something. Is the red? I think the red is part of the dress, not something that she has on underneath. Here is our fashion shoot with the Edward Hopper painting theme. This is Maya Hawk in Mew Mew. And this house doesn't look like it exactly like the house, but this is in an homage to the 1949 painting High Noon, and I'll show you it today. right now. Now see how that house had um, the windows on the roof. I can't quite think of what they're called right now. This one doesn't, but it definitely looks like she's in New England somewhere. I think they were in Massachusetts. So the work of legendary American painter Edward Hopper sets the scene for fashion with this charmingly mid-century sense of modern, modern, modernness, I'm going to say, I don't know how to say, modernity, photographed by Annie Leibovitz. Look at this one. This is based on the painting, what's the year? Let's see. 1914, Soir Blue. And it is set in a Parisian cafe. But this is the modern take on it. This dress is Erdem. And these are various artists in different fashions. This is based on Western Motel in 1957. Maya is wearing Prada, and what's that gentleman's first name? Mr. Ann Cart. Her counterpart here. His first name's Harold. He was born in Belgium, but he is now based out of Brooklyn, and he's a and Prada, and he is wearing J. Mew Service with a, the row shirt. Look at that old car. This is just based on, this isn't based on a particular painting. This is just Mr. Ankart painting Maya on a beach. And she is meant to represent Josephine, his wife, Edward Hopper's wife, Josephine. And this they are in Massachusetts. This is a Louis Vuitton gown. Looks like those are made gowns. This isn't based on a painting either.
but they went to the mountains of Wyoming in 1946. And she has a Mew Mew shirt on and a Prada ring. This is loosely based on Rooms by the Sea and Sun in an Empty Room. Maya is going to be in a production directed by her father, Wildcat. And it's about the mid-century creative writer, Flannery O'Connor. Oh, that'll be good. So Edward and Josephine differed in the fact that Edward was from a small town in New York, but she was raised in New York City. And he was kind of a brooding introvert and, introvert, and she was a very outgoing and bubbling bubbly. And they fought a lot, it says. But they were married, I think, for 40 years. I never saw her in Stranger Things. Oh, she was in that movie uh, Maestro, too, with Bradley Cooper. Joel, Josephine Hopper, was also an artist. They both studied at the New York School of Art. And for a long time, he made a living as an illustrator before his painting started selling. And it sounds like Joe Savine was instrumental in his first sales. This is based on the painting, New York movie from 1939. I'll show it to you. So this is at the Academy of Music in Northampton, Massachusetts. That's where they photogra Annie Leibovitz photographed this particular picture. She has on an Altuzara coat and a Jason Wu collection dress. Here are the artists that were each given a, a designer and they were asked to create a, a piece of artwork in, inspired by that designer. This is Elizabeth Columba. Remember, we saw her at the beginning of the magazine. And this is the beautiful painting that she created. And her designer was Christopher John Rogers that she was assigned to. I think she captured it quite, quite nicely. Look at the beautiful blue. Paul Chan was given Rick Owens and he made these video stills. Beatrice Mill Hayes was given Duro Olohu. Some of my motifs were inspired by Emilio Pucci's designs from the 60s. These are the poetry of a time. Fashion insists on galloping along, transient and ever mutating, while art and I, as an artist, Pursue longevity, and that's from Wangishi Mutu, who made this. They were tasked with the creation of something Dior based, and he, they created my belly flower sucking bird. There's the person, and there's the bird. That is very Dior, isn't it? Nabkin and Bodhi. And this is High Noon. 
There's something really magical about a person getting dressed and being able to convey, this is the mood I'm in. This is how I want to be seen. To me, that is art. That is not Kim's quote. This one's good too. Hadi Palapishi was given Marnie. And this is called Mouse Hole. And the lady is standing on her, she's not standing on her head, but she's twisted. This is based on that um, upside down dress. The artist says, my response for Marnie was the idea of the dress being upside down. And it developed into the idea of a figure wearing the dress and looking into the mouse hole. And the kitty's looking through the window. This one's interesting and I'll never be able to say the name. That's the person's name. They were given Ralph Lauren, dawn or sunset, who cares? I just found this idea fun, says the artist. The first name is Ragnar. That a man with glasses taped together by a band-aid living in Iceland should respond artistically to Ralph Lauren in Vogue. Irresistible absurdity. And this one's great too. Mm. They were given Chanel. The last name is Self. Tishabala, maybe? From afar. I always enjoy melding the boundaries between art and fashion. In reality, I think there is a false dichotomy between the two disciplines. Fashion is functional and often the functional creative disciplines get relegated to design, which I believe is still a bit of an antiquated idea. It is all art. Art is life and living well is an art form. What a wonderful quote. I love the pink nails. It's a lot of pink on that photo. It's, it's wonderful. Oh, look at this one. Jill Malidi on in Prada. She was given Prada the last days of winter. I wasn't sure how to collaborate with this collection, so I just used the model and the clothes as what they are here for my watercolor. Some of the trees are Christmas trees. Nicholas Party was given Alexander McQueen, and this is what Nicholas created. It's based on the Alba da Madonna which is at the National Gallery of Art in Washington. Okay, here's the story about Jeff Bezos' fiance, and he's in one of the pictures eventually, but it's mostly about her. She's planning her wedding, and she's also planning on an all-female trip to outer space. This is also photographed by Annie Leibovitz, out of this world. Well, where is she? What is this thing? This was, this whole thing blew my mind because I don't know much about Jeff Bezos. To be honest with you, I thought Jeff Bezos was still like running Amazon. There's a dog out there. Which maybe he kind of does, but he hasn't been like the elite the head of it for a while. They live on land in Texas, which we're going to see. And this is a 10,000 year clock. And this is a subterranean project in West Texas, backed by Jeff Bezos. I mean, how far does it go down? It's subterranean. I, I wouldn't like it there. I would be scared. But this is a Dolce & Gabbana dress. It is a it was fascinating to me that this thing even exists. Here is part of their property. That, well, they descended 500 feet into that clock. I don't know if that's the extent of it or if it goes down farther. I, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like it. I would be scared. This is all Ralph Lauren. Some of it's Ralph Lauren. The jeans are Ralph Lauren collection. And the top is Skims. 
the jacket is Polo, Ralph Lauren. It says somewhere here how many acres they have. Yeah, he's no longer Amazon CEO as of 2021. I didn't even know that, but to be honest with you, I don't, um, I don't really keep up with anything other than what I read in these magazines. I don't really watch news or anything on TV. Oh, there it says it. This property, holy Toledo. See, I thought it was hundreds of thousands of acres, and it absolutely is. It is 400,000 acres, a ranch near the New Mexico-Mexico border. Oh, he's owned it for 20 years because it reminded of his boyhood summers spent on his grandfather's land in Cotula, Texas. There's another photo. Well, there they are, but he'll be 60 soon, and I think she's planning a great big party for him. But let's just see how all this falls out. There's the ring. So what are they wearing here? Levi's. <laughs> That's easy enough. I wonder what the wedding will be. She's looking forward to being Mrs. Bezos. There's the ring again. Um, so this is in, see her name's right there, is inside a test capsule for New Shepherd, which is Blue Origin's reusable rocket. And the dress is Ferragamo. I wouldn't want to get in that subterranean clock and I really don't know about going up to space either. I would be very, very scared. Doesn't that look like it's on Mars or something? But it's their ranch. This is a Victoria Beckham dress. I wonder what it looks like in the front. She says she thinks she blacked out a little bit when he opened that ring box. Our lives are pretty normal, says Ms. Sanchez. Daily life mostly revolves around our kids. Well, that sounds pretty normal. And they sound like they, these kids get um, shuffled around between families, but that's okay. They'll be, they'll be fine. Let's get to... This guy doesn't have a subterranean clock, let's put it that way, or a rocket ship. But I'm fascinated with all of the stuff that he has. And I just was in awe of all of this. This is our story on Alessandro Michel. His, he's, we saw him in the beginning, but I think there's a photo of him on the next page. A love of all things romantically faded and careworn inspired Mr. Michel to turn a grand Roman apartment into his home, one teeming with centuries of history. And I think there's a quote in here somewhere that some of the stuff that he has is 800 years old. And I love old things too. Look at that chandelier. It's oak branch shaped. This is his second living room. And this is the entryway. This place probably has a lot of um, fireplaces if it's old. Look at the floor. Can you imagine just looking at all of his wonderful things? He'll be in there for hours. There he is. And look at all of them vases and glassware. I see stuff all the time at the sales my mom and I go to. I We just don't have the room for things. If I had great big shelves and a great big tall ceiling, I would though. Old pharmacy bottles and a lot of porcelain. Here's an 18th century portrait. 
with some needlepoint chairs. It says that he looks for a home in every city he visits, which is probably a lot. He's probably well-traveled, entertaining romantic visions for himself. Don't we all do that? And often following up on them. Before I sat down to do this, I usually leaf through the magazines and the one thing that I like to do is look and see how um, somebody, anybody, it could be an actor, an actress, but where did they grow up and like, were they rich? Was their father like a king or something? Was their mom a teacher? You know, I like to find out what their parents did. And so, you know, I just did a little cursory little search and I found out that his father was a technician at Italy's largest airline and that his mother was an executive to a, um, I'm, I'm sorry, an assistant to an executive. But there's some, a little quip about the dad coming Maybe what I read was wrong because he had a very interesting childhood. But we'll read about that in a minute. Let's look more at his apartment. They have, this is a 16th century portrait. And of course, the Delft tile plaid kitchen. Oh, look at that. Look at how tall the ceilings are. I just want to go here. And there's the art-filled dining room. This is a side tape. There's a lot of portraits. Maybe the apartment's 800 years old. The 800 years of these walls are right now to me, says Michelle. For this reason, I am not nostalgic. It is. It's an 800-year-old home. I had to shut it off. My dog is... He thinks he's a guard dog. He's not. He's a big old baby. Listen to him crying. What a brat. And then what is this? Ooh, that's his handsomely appointed wardrobe. Handsomely appointed wardrobe. And this would be another reason to go get this magazine. He's never really convinced that people who are no longer alive are gone. Everyone leaves strong traces behind. Well, this is what I found. His father was a subversive free spirit who frowned upon the idea of ownership. And isn't it funny that, it, well, it's not funny, but look at his son has, has, has this desire to acquire all of this. But his father was part of an occupation committee of Lata Continua in the 1970s, a far left political movement that fought to give housing to working families who couldn't afford rent. He had strong politic political reliefs, says Mr. Michelle, about his father, but he also loved nature. I'd say he was a pagan spirit, almost an animist. He would take us to the mountains and make us sit and listen, and he'd say, you talk too much, be quiet. Listen to the wind passing over the leaves. That is God. Then the family fell upon some hard times, it sounds like, and they had to go live in some shared space with other people. And he has some good um, stories about it, maybe not such good memories. Look at that. That is a Tuscan mirror. Look at those baskets. I love the wallpaper. I love the tile. I love everything about all of this. I love those dogs. And that, look at that bathroom. So that's that second living room. That's the view coming in through wherever. It has matching chandeliers. And here's a bedroom. Oh, 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 oh. 
Look at all the artwork up on the walls. He is a night walker. But he walks around the city during the day as well. Okay, enough of that. I could read that forever. I could comb through every detail of those pictures. Let's look at the gut, because there's some good stuff in here. This is a day thems jacket, $1,500. You can buy that at Bergdorf Goodman. The earrings are Anakuri, Gucci cup and saucer, that's $450. This Rimowa, R-I-M-O-W-A, this is their collaboration with Tiffany. It's a suitcase and it is $7,500. This watch is Dior, a Miu Miu shoe for $1,600, Hermes backgammon set. I tried to find this, and I'm just going to get, I found some similar. It's probably about $10,000. It's going to be expensive. So, Roger 58 hair clips up here, way, way, way up here. And they are. Four fifty and four four fifty and four ninety-five. A Balenciaga bag. I didn't look it up. Yves Saint Laurent skateboard. Thousand dollars. Lobje Haas playing cards, one twenty-five. The wreath is Windward Home. 450 and we've seen this shoe before what are they calling it nothing it's a thousand dollars and i know i've seen those shoes they might have had a heel oh, and there's the continuation of our stories on the vogue house i wonder if they'll do a big story in american vogue when the new one opens it sounds like they're still working on it the transition Oh, maybe not. Nicki Minaj says, cooking makes her feel more calm. And you know, when you think about it, it, it is a very grounding activity. You're preparing nourishment for people, possibly just yourself. And she says, you know the feeling when you unlock one of the secrets of life? For me, the idea of accepting what you can't change, it just never clicked. We said that before. You want to have control over everything, but that's the easiest way to be unhappy. That's something to think about, Nikki. So now, if I find myself trying to control it all, I try to remember what's really important. The look on my son's face and my whole soul lights up. He has no clue how nerve-wracking it has be, had been for me to be a mother and an artist, I bet. Here are more pet food uh, ads. What's going on with Vogue? I, I, I'm, I'm there for it. Beneful has a satisfaction guarantee if you have a dog and they don't like it. They're being a diva about it or something. You get your money back. And this is pate for small dogs. Some more about the Ms. Sanchez. They are very committed to the environment, it sounds like, as a couple. And I'll be honest, I, I've never, I've never even heard her name before, I don't think, but now I know a little bit more about her. She is a philanthropist. She's involved in a lot of organizations raising money for them. But I mean, how much money are they worth? Far more than 
anybody could spend in a lifetime, but I wonder how much it costs to go into space. I don't think I'm ever going to have to worry about it. There's more things to buy. I think that for the holidays, they had even more than ever. What's the 365 blanket? It's a sleep saver. They, they're touting the benefits of it. Oh, look at those dryer balls that are little penguins. Isn't that cute? Collagen peptides. My very own dragon. We've seen that before. L.A. Girl by Ulta. Luggage by Delcy. The, the last look portion of the magazine, like Vogue always has, they're all different sculptures with a high-end piece of jewelry on them. The sculptures are made of uh, wire and uh, wax, I think is one. But this looks like it is clay, hmm, right? And the piece of jewelry, this is Cartier High Jewelry. It is a watch, look at it. Rubies, sapphires, uh, emeralds and emerald cut diamonds arranged like patchwork. Then interspersed with these high-end jewelry things are all holiday H&M ads. And compared to some of the numbers that we've seen, you know, and the high-end designers, H&M is going to look like a real bargain. And it is, I've never, I can't say I've ever purchased anything from them, but a tuxedo dress for $26.99. They're ready for a night out on the town, black and white. So our next sculpture, it looks like it is made of wood, some sticks. It's just a little guy. And these are, it says a pair of clips. And it's rubies set in 18 karat gold, and they're made to look like primrose buds. And I'm obsessed with trying to grow primroses this spring. That reminds me of that. Here's a, some children's clothing, a bow detail dress for $17.99 from H&M. Cute. This looks like it is a, a clay again, a different color. These are Bulgari necklaces, and I believe that those are in the high um, jewelry portions of Bulgari. When I've looked things up, they never can tell the price. Sometimes with that stuff, you can find, if you do a deep search, they'll come up um, on other sites, and usually they're from other countries, and you can find out the price. But that high jewelry... It's often very, they'll never tell you really on the, um, directly on the Bulgari site anyway, because I'll be honest with you, like that, that necklace, maybe not those earrings, that, that's probably a quarter million dollars, right? That is diamonds and capuchon cut rubellite and amethyst. That's the top and then pear shapes, different colored stones. It's just, they're, they're works of art. This one though is a little switch. It's a bag, it's a Dolce & Gabbana bag. A satchel. And it's completely beaded. What's the sculpture made out of? Some type of a metal. I don't know. It's interesting, isn't it? The lines. Here we have two H&M ads. A printed shirt, $36.99. These little bra tops like we see at Chanel and everything. Um, off the shoulder dress, $26.99. Very, very cute and very affordable. 
this wax guy on it. Huh, there's a little red wax figurine. He has Tiffany rings. Oh, I've seen these too when I've been looking things up and I can never find the price because, well, these, one, one of these, they're Pod Para Dasha Sapphire, so they're that color. They're from Sri Lanka. One of them's five carats and one of them's six. I can't even imagine how much those are. And a tuxedo shirt for $26.99 at H&M. I love that skirt. They're ready for a night of fun. Chanel high jewelry bracelet. 18 karat pink gold with diamonds, rubies, spinels, garnets, and yellow sapphires arranged in a radial pattern. And the sculpture is interesting, isn't it? It's clay and wire and that might be wood or it might be some kind of a metal. I don't know. It's striking, isn't it? What's this one? A Louis Vuitton men's slipper on top of this guy's hat. Look at that jeweled slipper. That is the crown jewel of Louis Vuitton's latest men's collection. I don't know what the sculpture is. It kind of looks like wires with some kind of a fabric draped over it, but it looks like an abominable snowman. I couldn't find it. I thought maybe a jeweled slipper would be easier to find than the high-end jewelry. It's not. And then the last one is made of wires. Another little figure with feet and everything. And it is a Fendi Couture clutch. A ballet slipper pink colored, fully beaded. And then the last H&M ad is the most expensive item that they had. And it's this bow mini dress, which is party ready. It looked good. Now we end up with Anya Taylor. Joy. And this is Schlumberger by Tiffany. Mr. Schlumberger is no longer with us, but he created this necklace anyway. Flowers and leaves necklace. This, I think, is, um, they may replicate these necklaces. You're not going to, it's high jewelry, and you're not going to um, find it right on the site to buy. Lady Gaga wore something. She may have worn this exact necklace for all I know. Very similar to that at the 2022 SAG Awards on loan. But she's a new ambassador, Anya is, for Tiffany. Well, relatively new. But if you go to their site, she's dressed in the same outfit, same pose, in all different configure configurations of jewelry collections and it's interesting this is um i think this is all stuff that may be vintage i don't know don't correct me if i'm wrong it's stuff that would cost you know probably hundreds of thousands of dollars but they have other things with her modeling them on their site but i just have to say this about her i have seen her i'm trying to think of the um I think the director's name is Robert Eggers. Let me look it up real quick. It's right at the tail end here. And I had heard about the movie The Witch. Yeah, Robert Eggers. On a podcast. She's in it. She's pretty much the star. She was very young. She was over 18 in the movie. And then she was in another movie well she's been he made the lighthouse there's only men in that 
Oh, she might be in that, actually. Maybe not. And then the Northman. She's a, she's very good. I'm so impressed with her by, or, or, as an actress, and I loved those movies. They're a little, they're dark, but I hope she wins an Oscar one day. I just, um, and I'm glad that she's got this Tiffany thing. I hope she gets free jewelry. I don't know how it works. <laughs> I don't know. I thank you for watching my video. I finally got another fashion video done. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the support. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.